Hey guys, I'm Nick Jones. And I'm Jacob Roberts. Oh gosh, that's a wrong shot. Anyway, uh, you guys, maybe you saw Carlo on um, his Skype window there. Carlo was on Skype with us today. Um, great show. We had a lot of fun talking about it. And um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, behind Jacob, that keeps. Yep, there we go. We're, this is our first. Oh my gosh. This is the first <laughs> in studio tech weekly that we've done. I actually made a uh, teleportation device and I'm sticking my hand through uh, time and space. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got some pretty cool info coming up about a couple new shows, but also new studio. We're going to try to kind of reorganize that today. Yeah. We're going to be moving down to below. Yeah, down below. <laughs> below. <laughs> anyway, guys, we talked about some cool things. We talked about. Um, some interesting ways to cut the cable um, in this week's episode. Also, yeah. we talked about uh, NFC. Maybe the what, what's so good about NFC, and then maybe yeah. why we don't like it. Maybe. And then uh, finally, we talked about what else we talked about. We talked about some cable companies trying to make an iPad app, yeah. as well as yeah. Um, yeah. Jacob's got some cool bookmarks about some. Um, and and we also talked about well, not really talked about, but why is this camera so stinking small, and what is it for? Yeah. All this so, week. Tech Weekly. Tech Weekly is up next, and uh, if you're watching this in reruns, um, don't try to chat because we're not going to talk to you. It's kind of weird because there's a little bit of a, there's like a tiny bit of delay from what I see here and what's on there because it's anyway. Um, welcome into Tech Weekly, episode 40. I'm Nick Jones, along as always with Jacob Roberts. Um, do what? Read it out. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so, um, since Jacob, <laughs> Jacob's in studio today, first, first time ever, and I'll, Carlo's joining us as well, Carlo Brown, twitter.com slash Carlo Brown. Carlo, how you doing? I'm alright, um, I haven't been my Twitter's and there's, uh, yeah, I forgot to tweet. I know, I've gotta do that too, so... What we're going to do is we're going to have awkward Jacob cam for a little while while we Hi tweet guys. out stuff. Um, but yeah. And you can sort of see Nick in the like awkward backwards mirror. Yeah, so this is probably going to be the last time that we do any show in here. This is the last here. time we're doing the show. The show's over, guys. Sorry. In here. In here. No, last please. time, because we're going to fix fix up the studio downstairs. Yeah. So it'll be like a lot better. And then we're going we're gonna to get this bad boy going. And it'll be all like, what's up, guys? And I've got the... It's going to be pretty cool. I'm just... I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and say... Uh, and Jacob's already um, loaned us his his net top, so we can actually have... We'll be able to have at least a... So this is what I was actually... Anyway, while I'm wasting time here and not yeah. tweeting... So um, um, if you guys really want to know the uh, awesomeness of the, this little camera, that is it. That's the whole thing. So... It's basically just a CMOS sensor. And like a little circuit board to, to do we need to do. The doobly do. And then you just like get the threads going here, maybe. Get it going. There it goes. And boom. It's your uncle. Yeah, I realized that I, I looked that up one day because there's. Um, there's some people that I watch that say that a lot, and um, that's actually an English phrase. Did you know that? Yeah, a lot of people in I'm English say that. I don't know about that. I'm just saying. That could be something around here. We could have made that one up. Yeah. <laughs> Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave this in the recording because this is awesome. Yeah. This is way more. Well, I don't say that one that much, but yeah, it is. Uh, it's UK slang to say that. <laughs> I, I just looked it up, you know. I mean, I didn't know. I'm just saying, Bob's your uncle. See, I don't have Ping FM. For some reason, Ping FM is the only thing that doesn't su It supports multiple everything but Twitter accounts. So I can't do to both of them. I'm going to make some software for Nick. I know. The Uber Tweeter. The Uber Tweeter, we can call it. Actually, that's probably already trademark. Yeah, probably. So, Jacob, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Nick. How's it going? I'm doing really well. And um, it's kind of weird. I think we should double box it still. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You're still not... The, oh, wait, the webcam wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, so like I said, this is going to be the last time, and I'm still peeking out on my mic. Um, this is going to be the last time that Jacob joins us in this room, hopefully. If we can get, I'm, I'm hoping to get most of the stuff moved today, and um, 
I don't know. Gadget gears may be in. Possibly and, maybe some uh, Ethernet cable ran. I don't think we're going to need it. Oh, we're not? Uh-uh. I'm just saying. Okay. But anyway, we got a, I, I bookmarked like 10 stories because a new car was going to be on here. And it's a good week. So, um, <laughs> Jeff, you want to bring up the first story there? I don't yeah, it's up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been waiting on you, man. Okay, what, what, so what's going on? I can't even read it. This so, is really yeah. Jerry. So, um, Jeff, it looks like that Visa is uh, kind of, is that the first one? Mm-hmm. All right, um, Visa is reading a uh, new service that's gonna. They're trying to take the place of PayPal, um, and a lot of people are suggesting it might be only for um, Visa customers. But the cool thing is, it will be a um, widely supported kind of like PayPal. Jet, you use PayPal a lot. Um, oh yeah, tons of times. Yeah, the cool thing about PayPal is it's directly from your bank account, right? Or uh, yes, kinda. you can set up a direct link uh, the way I got mine still is set up through a uh, routing number yeah which um, is basically like them writing you a check every time or you writing them a check every time it kind of takes it a little bit longer to come out but it comes out pretty quickly but if you want to get verified and get all the benefits I think one of the interesting thing about PayPal is it's actually wide, widely supported um, through pretty much any website or a lot of you know Amazon everybody takes it I guess as a alternate payment method yeah. rather than using Visa plus you Plus, it's a lot better than doing like a wire transfer or something like with, yeah. you know, whoever because you got someone to back you up. Yeah. You know, you got like stuff going on. You can be like, "What's up?" So, does it say anything about doing donations? Um, I don't think they're. I don't think that's what they're talking about, really. Um, because one I think of the interesting talking about becoming like another version of PayPal. So, <laughs> um, you know, individual payments. You know, where you don't have to. Uh, Things or use a card or have a bank account. Really, you can just, it. it's virtual money, basically. Can do you guys have PayPal or some something like that in the UK? I guess I can um, in the UK. I can use PayPal if okay. I want to. I can open an account and stuff, but I haven't personally because I haven't got a use for it. But yeah. yeah, I do believe it's pretty much a worldwide thing. Anyone can do it. Oh yeah, that's cool. I, I guess you. I guess you're right because it's more of <laughs> well, you know. I guess some some websites actually. You know, you can only sign up for them if you're in the U.S., like Netflix or something, but that's a service, I guess. But, yeah, yeah we, we don't have any um, Netflix in the U.K. Yeah. yeah. don't have Hulu or any of that stuff either. Yeah. It's got it similar Hulu, things, but either. they suck. <laughs> yep. Um, so, I mean, that would be pretty cool, but then again, I mean, it's probably only going to be for Visa accounts, I guess. I mean, you know, and they'll probably still take commission, I would think. I don't know. I mean, that would just be... I don't know. I, I, it's kind of interesting that they're. I think they're going to be a little too late to the game because you know Jacob uses his PayPal all the time for pretty much any order that he does online, and a lot of people. It's it's kind of cool though because you don't have to know, like you know the way you would have to do a storefront on your website. Okay, you either have to set up with something in your bank. You have to have to get a business account on your bank, and you have to and write have a back to do, end for it. Yeah, too. and you'd have to do all that. You have to pay whatever per whatever transaction with Visa or whoever you would do now what they're basically what they're doing is they're gonna make a PayPal sort of thing where um, you go on there and instead of having to like say I Nick Nick basically sold me his phone or something okay yeah. I'm gonna pay him for it I don't I don't wanna pay cash for whatever reason so instead of well, like yeah. doing a check or something like that this is a virtual check basically it goes directly to, and he doesn't have to deposit the check. It goes, goes directly, directly to his, his bank account, account yeah. or his Visa cool. account, wherever the Visa card is established at. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I mean, I'd like to see it. I guess, well, I guess PayPal essentially does this, but I'd like to see it maybe not Visa exclusive. Yeah. But that's still pretty cool because, um, you know, I wouldn't. A lot of people don't want to pay with check or not check with cash because you can't track it. So I would never be able to get my refund, and I, I would think that Visa would back this on a back end, some, yeah. like, you know, say, I'm going to guarantee you to have this m much money or whatever. That's, that's, the, thing, that's the thing with uh, uh, PayPal is if you get verified, and that's the whole thing you got to do. You can go get signed up with a PayPal account right now, and you can go buy stuff via a little routing number with your bank or something. But um, when you go in there to uh, – um, if you want to send money directly to someone else's – bank account basically you'd have to go in there and you know get verified and then it could basically they say in you are who you are and you own that bank account and you just gonna find someone's check somewhere and 
yeah. are buying stuff with their money. And then it'll actually, when you say, I want to send you, you know, 20 bucks or something, it'll take it out of my bank account and put it into his if they're both, you know, verified. So. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I, like I said, I probably, I can see it not, I think it's one of those things where it would be cool for somebody who has a Visa account. And if it's Visa exclusive, I mean, you know, you could take advantage of that. And I guess most people have a Visa card in the U.S. anyway. That's pretty cool. Well, I, I have Visa here. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, Visa, and I guess Visa is one of the largest credit yeah, cards. Yeah, pretty much I Visa think. and MasterCard are pretty much I guess the, like a, the largest ones. Well, and then American Express is sort of there, but they always Discovery, have so yeah. much high fees on, like, Discovery. if you're wanting to, like, Use an American Express card in like a store or something. Oh, they transaction pay, fees, yeah. Yeah, they got to pay yep. so much more for American Express. In a and, lot of places you see them, they don't even take American yeah, Express. Yeah, they don't even take it. So Visa is pretty much almost accepted everywhere. Yeah, which is okay. anywhere they, so, they accept credit cards. So. Yeah, pretty much. That's cool. So. And I can see this. I think PayPal is really acceptable for more online payments. I mean, you could do it. You could just be like, hey, I'm going to pay you for this, and I can go to my smartphone or whatever. And I mean, you can set it up on PayPal right now because you can you can actually set up you know an item or whatever payment, yeah. And then send the link to your friend and say click this, and then he can do his own PayPal however he wants to do it. So, but it's it's cool to see other people jumping on board with that. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, so let me see what's our next story. Um, so Joe, it was almost a week ago. I guess it was a week ago yesterday that um, at least us in the U.S. woke up to the news that Japan um, had had, what was it, like the seventh largest earthquake in recorded history. I think it was like the largest since not, uh, like 100 years or something. And uh, one of the things that they're still struggling with is uh, nuclear power. Because um, Japan is one of the largest um, per, I guess, per unit of uh, energy or, or unit of uh, electricity created. They're like one of the highest um, that used nuclear power. So like some huge number, like, percentage of their power comes from nuclear consumption. It's like 70-something percent, I read. Um, like, here in the U.S., it's about, uh, I think it's a little under or right around 10 percent. So, and I think we only have, like, there's only 470-something nuclear power plants in the world, and, like, 30 of those are in Japan. And if you think about how, how large Japan is, that's a pretty big number. So, Jet, right now they're still struggling with a nuclear crisis. Uh, one of the things that they're struggling with is um, getting, is it the reactors to cool off, I guess? Yeah, uh, the way it explained, I saw in a video, it explained, um, basically all three of their safety systems has failed. The yeah. first one was, of course, the pumps, and then the next one failed, and then the next one failed, and then basically right now the, uh, the rods that, you know, the whatever, the whatever material they're using, plutonium or uranium. I think it's, I think it's uranium. Uranium yeah. rods. Um, they, uh, they're exposed now, and when you expose them to air, it's like a metal. They're basically, it's a, you know, uranium is a metal. It's just, it just ir irrates, irradiates so much, you know, ions and stuff that it just destroys stuff and just generate, it oxidizes instantly and makes tons of heat. And they're saying that it's so much heat that it won't stop until they have a meltdown, which is where the rods That's will actually just, yeah. melt, melt together. Yeah. And then it just makes craziness, and then it basically just dumps through the earth into the core. So this is really the only problem that a lot of people see with nuclear power. Because yeah, because if, you don't, if, if, it, if your systems fail, you will have a meltdown, unless right. you can cool down the co coils. But that's the way. They don't cool down until they're spent. That's just the way they work. And it takes like a while. It like The half-life of uranium, I don't know how long it is, it's but really long it time. takes a long time. And once, once the coils are used up and they no longer are going to you know, radiate stuff, then they yeah. go and put them in a little landfill somewhere, bury them in the ground, in a mine or something, and that's where they sit for the rest of their life. Yeah, but so these are like, you know... They still got plenty of juice left in them, and they're ready to go. And yeah. so that's the problem they're running with is just all this, you know. They're, well, they're worried about the meltdown. And yeah. you know. um, this happened. Where was where was it in like the seventies or the late eighties or the early eighties, late seventies? Um, Chernobyl or something, maybe. Yeah, Chernobyl. Yeah, and this, they had a meltdown. Yeah, 
and that was I we literally saw I think for my dad's a um electrical engineer so he he deals with um yeah. a lot of the he doesn't deal with the nuclear power but he deals with like the equipment that turns yeah. it into power or whatever um and really for 30 years in the US there were, after Chernobyl which was like until like 5 years ago they hadn't even started building nuclear power plants so everything that we have in the US is at least dated for from 30 years ago yeah. a lot of times 40 um and honestly I'm pretty pro nuclear power because like, well, it's, it, it's cleaner in the sense of you don't have stuff no being emitted into the atmosphere, but like, when something happens, it's yeah, detrimental. Yeah. You know, it's like I mean, yeah. you, you abandon that whole area and never come back again. Like I Chernobyl, I saw a documentary. Uh, nobody goes there anymore. Uh, technically, you really can't go there. Um, yeah. I think they, I think they'll may, might allow you in there if, but under your own free will type, like. If you go in there, they're not responsible if you die. Yeah. Um, and they, they brought... These guys went in there and did Geiger counters. And they were just going around seeing how radioactive everything was. And the trees, like tree, saplings and trees that have grown, ha have radiation in them. Everything has radiation in it now there. Because it's been soaked up through the... The radioactive isotopes have been soaked up through the tree. And um, you can go down in like these mine shafts and like everything's like glowing with different radiation and stuff and it's yeah i mean it's pretty serious and you know i guess this is something that you know probably everybody like for a while i think for the last like five or ten years everybody's been pro nuclear power i mean granted there's all you have to realize that there's gonna if you mess up you're essentially screwed I and mean, there's not yeah. there's not anything else so essentially yeah. you have and to have zero it's, tolerance it's a little different with coal because coal you, you gotta weigh your you gotta weigh your your yeah your give and takes there, your, you know, whatever. Um, coal, while it's running, is dumping CO2 into the atmosphere. So many pounds per kilowatt. I think it's something like like 3,000 pounds per kilowatt produced or something like that of CO2, right. which is a pretty good amount. Um, I think the average human only does like maybe 50 or 100, not, not even that much of pounds of CO2 breathed out of their mouth every day. So... You're talking, I mean, that's, and there's m millions and millions of kilowatts produced out of a coal plant. Right. But if a coal plant goes, you know, it doesn't go critical. I mean, coal plant, the worst thing that would really happen is the boiler explode or something. And I mean, some, I mean, pe I mean, some, I mean, of course, people will probably die from it if they're around it. But it's I mean, not you're, you're just talking about burning coal. It's, yeah. it's a fire. Yeah. You, the place would burn down. Okay, well, oh, well. You don't have fallout. You don't have, you know... Nothing's growing green. I mean, you might you might lose... I mean, I know it sounds kind of mean, but you might lose some people, but that's that's it. And essentially, I mean, you're talking about... I think one of the stats I was seeing on Fox News is like a 50-mile radius in Japan is... I mean, they've had to evacuate it, and essentially they may not be able to return if this if this doesn't happen. Yeah, because if it does, if it, if it does go uh, nuclear and melt and have a meltdown... It, there, you can't stop that stuff yeah, from getting out. It just out. goes. It's just gone. It, it's, it, it just keeps going. It's a chain reaction. So. And, I mean, one last thing, because I know we've talked about this for a good while. Um, let's see. It's one of those things where it's a gradual leak, and essentially when they all melt down, that just means that it's it's all been leaked, and it's not going to be like one of those things where once it takes, nothing leaks until all of it melts out, if that makes sense. It's kind of like a candle, so, you know... As the rod melts, there's things going into the atmosphere. So right now, gradually, if they don't stop it, there's still nuclear material leaking out, but it's it's in low quantities. But they still have to evacuate it because you know even a low quantity of uranium leaking out into the atmosphere could be deadly. So, I mean, that's that's really the main concern now. I mean, other than you know, there's like 200, there's like a a ton of people that are left homeless because of this, but. Like, the main concern for widespread safety is this right now, and uh, I know the U.S. is actually sending a bunch of chemical engineers to go help this because they don't... I mean, they're essentially on last step right now, last resort. Um, so hopefully this will be resolved. You know, it's going to be interesting how they get that done. And uh, hopefully they don't, they don't have a meltdown. Yeah. So our next story is, uh, Carl, we just talked about Netflix uh, and how you can't get it. Um, kind of interesting here. We saw this earlier that Hulu was doing like an original series, right? I think they've done this before. They've talked about it. Yeah, they had the, what was it, the 
the eye, uh, whatever it is, eye on the something or another. I, don't know. I mean, I don't freak. It was some kind of re- reality show. Yeah. yeah. And there's a couple things like I know um, MSNBC or somebody they actually do a. Um, it's like a sitcom or almost. It's what is it called? Fringe or something? It's uh, has that something day Felicia Day or something in it. I guess yes, yeah, Fringe. I don't know, something like that, but it's an online series, and it's been pretty popular, and, you know, they give it, it's free, um, and essentially all you would have to have is Netflix is reading, that's what this is Oh, I see about. what you're saying, yeah. So, I mean... Web, web, webisodes. Yeah. It's like what we do, except there's ads, and that's how they make their revenue. Oh, yeah. Um, Carl, I mean, do you, I mean, this is pretty cool for people like us who spend more time <laughs> on our computer than we Kinda do. It sucks for people like you that don't have Netflix. Well, I mean, you know, I can see... <laughs> Don't you guys have like Love Box or what's it called? Like Love Love Movie something? Um, yeah, they have this service called Love Film. I'm love not, Film, yeah. Um, I think you have to subscribe to that. I, I don't know much about it because I don't really look into that. I'm not much of a film guy. Yeah. Um, I don't really watch cable TV either, so something like this for me would be. It'd be cool, but I don't know if I'd use it much even if I had it anyway. Yeah, because I, I spend most of my time watching podcasts and stuff. I don't really watch TV or anything like that. I'm kind of in the situation of you. All I really watch on cable is sports. And that's one of the things that's been like, uh, in a sense, it's a monopoly in the U.S. Because you can't, the only way that you can get sports on the internet is through a website. And it's kind of like this, like, um, I can get it, but, you know, not you're not going to, essentially, it would be harder to get it. And it's probably, you may go through illegal ways of getting it, I guess you could yeah. say. Um, but, but it is possible to get Netflix on a proxy in the U.K., but that's a... That's yeah. getting to dodgy territory. So, I think it, it's gonna. It would be pretty cool, especially for people trying to cut the cable, or cut you know, cut your cable or whatever. Um, I just think it'd be kind of interesting. And honestly, the more content that's online, the better for anybody who wants to cut cable. So I don't see anything wrong with yeah. it. Um, pretty much all my shows that I I want to watch are available for free on the internet. Yeah. So I think, I should think cable TV is pretty much dying anyway. Oh yeah, they're they're trying everything they can. You know, they keep, they, like, we have Charter over here, which is one of the major cable companies in the southeast of the United States, and um, they're, they they call me at least, I have their internet, they're ridiculously high speed. I was downloading something last night at, like, five megabytes a second. It was ridiculous. I was like, oh my gosh. And, um, so I like, want your internet. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, I need, to, I need to, like, broadcast it out, share it to everybody. Um, the, uh... They, they call me every week, and they're like, oh, we got a deal for you. We can get you a phone line, and we can get you TV, and it's only going to cost you $100 more a month. I said, what? I said, hold on. I got a free cell phone with work that's long distance free everything, and all my shows are free on the Internet. So if you can't offer me all of that for the same price that I'm doing right now, then I'm not going to take the offer. That's why they keep calling me back all the time. So Yeah. Um, you know, I... Like Carlos said, a lot of people, I mean, you can just look on, like, Facebook. Everybody, everybody's on Facebook. I mean, my grandma's on Facebook. Like, Jacob's mom and dad, or at least your dad is on Facebook. I mean, I, everybody's on Facebook. <laughs> at least my dad's. So yeah. My dad's constantly on Facebook. But anyway, that kind of shows that a lot of people are going online and not really on to, um... Yeah. Everything's going web-based. It, it's all going to the cloud. Let's go to the cloud. <laughs> what would you do if, like, everything just flipped in this house and, like... We were like sitting in this computer control room. That'd be awesome. That would be. I don't cool. know. I got a weird um, mind. So Jeff, our next story is uh, something that I think there was a couple rumors coming out of. Um, what is that site? Like, um, Carla, you might know. It's like the. Um, I can't remember the. I think they're owned by AOL or somebody. It's a Mac blog or something. It's like um, T U something. I can't. Um, T U A W. Yeah, that's it. I think there was a couple. Um, Rumors coming out this week that the some people had thrown around that the iPhone 5 may have NFC communications, uh, near field communications, and that what's called, or near something. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, that's, that's what's cool. And there is a rumor that the iPhone wasn't going to have that. And now a lot of people say it hasn't been adopted. Even the uh, the newest phone, I think one of the newer phones that just came out in the U.S. is the HTC Thunderbolt for Verizon, which is essentially my phone on Verizon. It's just on their network, so everybody's making a you know, a big, up, it's just getting a bunch of, uh, you know, press because it's the first 4G phone on Verizon, I guess. But, Jeff, so essentially, near-field communication is a, um, it has some kind of radio chip or something inside the phone that allows you to, 
uh, do multiple things. So I know that um, Visa has this thing called like Fast Pass or something that's on. I know it's on my parents' card, but rarely anybody yeah. supports it. It's RFID basically on your card, right? But so on you, here, it, on here, it really wouldn't be RFID just because that works off of when you're in the radio field of the device, it powers itself up without having to have ex, you know internal batteries or anything. Right. This is um, similar to um, a lot of phones used to have the, uh, what was it called, the uh, uh, jump, whatever, the, the little helper thing for like people with hearing aids and stuff. Oh. Um, it's the same thing, because there was like a, like a, what was it, the myth going around, like if you ha both had that on your phone, you could hold your car keys up to your cell phone and call your friend and get him to put it up next to the car. And when you press the button, it would unlock your car because it would transmit the signals through the phone. Yeah. I'm like, you people are crazy. So, um, but it would, it would, it's a, it's pretty cool because it can, um, it can store multiple. Oh yeah. Different things, so you could like a lot of and people. It's your cell phone. You're, you know, more likely you'll have your cell phone with you. Yeah. So a lot of people were saying like it could work as a like a Visa could. Oh yeah, like a tap, tap and go, or pay to yeah. tap, or whatever it's. And called. then also there's some other things like uh, Google. So essentially, the only consumer phone that's out right now is the Nexus. Is it the Nexus S that has this? The yeah. um, the new phone from from Google, and they're really the only people that's built it in. And they come. I mean, there's really nothing you can use with it right now. I mean, there might be a couple people that have it. I think they have a couple on Google headquarters, but it came with like the directions or the install directions or whatever, and you could just simply put your phone up to it, and it transmitted that information like essentially in no time because you know it is radio frequencies, I yeah. guess. So. I mean, I don't really see that going anywhere, and I can see a, a bunch of privacy problems that outweigh the... Um... Well, like, people that could, like, hack into your phone, okay? I don't really like the fact that those cards do that. Because, yeah, cause... because all people have to do... Now, this is all you have to do. I understand there's, like, an algorithm or something where people have to... It, the, the device is, like, your card, basically, when if it has the little tap-and-go thing. Right. They has to do a handshake when it establishes a connection, and then it says, okay, give me your information. In some form, it's encrypted, kind of. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. But everybody knows anything that's encrypted has been encrypted by someone, and if a machine can decrypt it, then anybody and their brother could decrypt it if they knew how to. I don't like that because all it, nobody has to pickpocket you anymore. Yeah. All they got to do is have a device that can do RFID reads and just slap your butt with it or come up close to you while you're walking on the street, and now they got all of your credit cards. Yep. They got everything. And any you know, information. If they, yeah. I mean, essentially they could have the same phone as you that can read that information or yes. something. Now, now with a cell phone, I could see how like you have to like press a button or something or you open up the app and it will do it only when you have the app open. But still. But still, people could do wireless attacks, Bluetooth attacks, and then get up in there and do whatever. So, so Carl, you that, kind that's of... the one thing that puts me off that a bit, the security. That basically yeah. anyone... Uh, so I went into, say, Starbucks, I went to pay for a coffee with this thing, someone intercepted my wireless signal, and uh, my credit cards got jacked just like that, without me yeah. Yeah. even doing anything. And it's, it, I mean, you basically have cyber pickpocket, pickpocketers now, and they don't got to go, you know, getting razor blades and cutting your, you know, wallet out of your back pocket, they just... Bump just, up against you, and you'll you never know. know, I mean... And they don't even got to touch you, I mean, they could be RFID with a strong enough reader... Can generate a field that's six feet in diameter, so they don't—they could just walk by you. Could, you wouldn't even know it room. was them. They just have it in their pocket, walking up and down the street, and just have a program that just whatever cards they find that stores them, and then they just go out to the, what the nearest ATM and dump all your cash into physical money, and you're gone. And, you know, you're, you're gone. Yeah. And especially if they got cash, I mean, it's almost impossible to track that. Now you could. Now, a lot of credit card companies would back you and say, okay, well, we understand or whatever, but it would still be hard to get that actual money back. Yeah. I mean, I... Now, I did see um, uh, at CES uh, in January, uh, this one company did have some, uh, um, some things going on where they actually had cards that had, like, almost like little, like, memory, like, like oh, little yeah, surface yeah, switches to yes. And it's kind of cool because... Um, you can actually have it where it's locked out, and it doesn't even show. Like I've seen one of them, it won't, it won't, won't even show the, the magnetic number. strip. It won't show the magnetic strip. Yeah, is this the one you're it can, about? It can completely lock out the card completely until you pick it up and go. Bloop. 
Yeah. You know? So it's kind of like hurt. a... I mean, essentially, it's just a dumb piece of plastic and yeah. until you until get you, your hand Until you yeah. actually do it. Like so that. someone would still have to actually physically pickpocket you and then they would still Pitch. have to be able to activate it and it's just... I mean, it's just another step of security yeah. and I, I like that a lot better than... Which I know a lot of people think it would be convenient to just have my phone and just be like, boom, oh, yeah. there you go. But, but I, I would not want to be like walking up and down the street and someone could yeah. walk by me and I don't think steal I want everything. That I mean, that's just... I think for... We're making it too easy. For the cool factor, I guess. I mean, that's essentially all you're oh, going to yeah, get is the convenience, I hey, guess you could call it. Right there. That's yeah. where... That's where... I mean, I, I know we don't need to go down there, but that's where it needs to be. Because no one can come up there and just be like... I'm gonna steal your. I mean, they could. Yeah. yeah, they could steal your fingerprints. But anybody could steal your fingerprints. But it's a lot more difficult to, you know, go in there and that. actually like have to use it or you know something along those lines where, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to get to that whole like awkwardness where it's like your yeah. body is the pavement, you know, type deal. But I don't know. It's yeah. yeah. Um. So I guess kind of staying on the security. Here, sort of. Um, Twitter this week announced that they're going to have all. It's still an option. So you know how Google they can actually. I think I'm not sure. I don't think all Google searches, but it's kind of like Google. They have the beta thing where you can do SSL encryption or whatever. Um, which essentially, if you look at your URL bar, it would be HTTPS. Um, I know a lot of banks in the U.S. I'm sure in uh, the U.K. do as well. Use that um, web standard to encrypt your data. Which once again. Um, if it's encrypted, it can be decrypted, but it's just another step. Let's just say that you're on, um, let's just use the Starbucks, for example. You're sitting in Starbucks. What's that new program that you can use? It's like Wireshark or something shark. Um, yeah. You can just sit there, and you can read everything that people are doing on that Wi-Fi network as long as you have admin e access, and essentially you can get that just by being in the Wi-Fi thing, but that's pretty cool. I mean, now granted, you... I mean, what's the worst you can do to a Twitter account? Like, unfollow everybody and, like, send a couple messages. It's almost like a Facebook account sort of getting hacked. I mean, it's, it's, um... I mean... It's inconvenient, I guess you could say. I mean... I mean, and, and if somebody got a hold of your phone, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. It's only know? for web users as well, so... And we talked about how many people actually use the web. It's very slim. I think it's, like, 20% of their traffic yeah. actually comes through the web. Um... I guess I mean I guess it's pretty cool for people that use the web. I mean it's a good step towards security, I guess. But but I, it's kind of backwards when you think about it. But just because Twitter is a place to share information, yeah, to, publicly, okay. Um, unless you got your your account locked down to private, which most people don't really do that much anymore. Because if you're on Twitter, you're you're just like, hey, Roddy, look at this. Yeah. So it's like like and rarely like people a, do it on Facebook. A, a right? secure, you know. Protocol, HTTP, HTTP protocol for Twitter, it's sort of like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's good, but in a way, I can see what you're saying is there's no... There's, there's no point, yeah. really. You're, you're not... Tr it's not like you're transferring sensitive data over Twitter. Which I kind of think is the same with Google searches. I mean, I guess that's more classified that you may not want some people to see that, but yeah. then again, I mean... But, anyway. it's, yeah. it's, it's better than not having it at all. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess you're right. Um, it's a good feature to have, but I think what Jacob's saying is it's really... Well, see, like, I, I could see it on my Gmail. My Gmail has the option to do HTTPS, yeah. okay? Yeah, I, I might be sending, like, you know, s sensitive emails, which most of the time now, like, even your banks won't send you a sensitive email. Yeah. Like, yeah, they won't like send, I mean, some, you know, websites will send, like, your passwords and stuff on your email. But, like, you know, it's like, I could see where you could use it on Gmail or something like that, but... Yeah. Twitter, it's kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. So, Jeff, this is kind of an interesting story because um, we've talked about how we use, essentially, I mean, you know, I think I strayed away from IE at like 6 or 7 back in the XP days. Um, recently, you know, they've had a lot less problems with security breaches and things like that in IE8. Um, well, this week, um, IE9 was released, and I'm, I'm going to have to say it looks pretty cool. Um, that's, that's about as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even think that I've got the system update that's downloaded it for me yet. I think you still have to actually go out there and download it because I've been kind of monitoring my, um, Windows 7 installs and so far I haven't gotten it yet. I mean, I, I guess... Now, w w will it automatically download? Or I really don't know. I would think that, um... Because 
you know, I like how they 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 strategically title this. Internet Explorer 9 hits 2.3 million downloads in first 24 hours. We're mildly impressed. Now, I could see Microsoft, you know, oh, let's just push an update to everybody's right. computer via Windows update. But I mean, oh, look, we got 2.3 million but downloads. There's a ton more. Huh? There's a ton. I would, I would expect that number to be great. Well, maybe they only pushed it to 2.3 sure. million. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's just make a break. Let's let's break a record just for fun. Because so, yeah. everybody and their brother has. If you have Windows, you have you Internet have Explorer have. because you have to have it's Internet integrated Explorer. into and, um, Windows Explorer. All your system updates go through Internet Explorer. Yes. That's why it's vital to keep Internet Explorer updated even if you're not using yeah. it. Sadly, our widget for yeah. Windows 7 and Vista uses Internet Explorer just because that's the way they have that set up. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, yeah, okay, 2.3 million, yay, but is it is it actual... Someone went on the website and downloaded it, or is it somebody just pushed it, or they threw it in an update, or, you know? Yeah. So, Carl, I know you're usually a Firefox user. I mean, does this impress you at all? I mean, or are you just kind of... Uh, I'm not... Uh, I don't like Internet Explorer yeah. at all, to be honest. I'm a bit biased when it comes to Internet Explorer. Yeah, I know. And I'll probably download it just for the sake of being up-to-date on Windows, but I, I like Firefox a lot, and I'm yeah. not going to use anything else. Yeah, I've been using the for at least on Windows. I still have I've still had some issues on um, Linux Mint getting it installed. I've got it, but it's like not exactly the release or whatever. So um, I think there's a PPA for really? Linux. Mint. I've got a I've got a PPA set up for something. It's kind of weird. It's like some testing. It's like their beta, but then it upgraded or something. But um, it's, it's their um, beta channel on the Mac. I simply just. Um, they you know, downloaded it and installed it. Yeah. Uh, I think you do the same on Windows. On Linux, you got to add the PPA, and it's their beta channel. And, uh, uh, and I think that's like the permanent beta channel. I think when, okay. it, when the stable one comes out, you have to switch it or something. Okay. Yeah, and, and also, let's not forget that Firefox 3 got 8 million downloads in one day back in 2008. Yeah. I mean, okay, it was in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. Yeah. So, yeah, 2.3 million in a day. Okay, yeah. Way to go. And I... But, yeah. It still it still blew everybody else out of the water, and that you have to go download. You're not going to accidentally download Firefox, so yeah, you know, it's just. And I would I would guess that Firefox has a ton more than eight million users now. Oh yeah, a ton more. The Firefox four to me is pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I've been I've you, I'm I switched over to my my work computer onto it. I got my net uh, both of my well not both of my netbooks. My work netbook. I got my desktop at the house now on it. I like it because it's got the sync. And that you can go in there cool. and I got yeah, it on my, I got on my cell phone yeah. now. I like. So. The only thing I have problems with on Android is the startup time. But if you have it yeah. running, like you said, it's, if they could just if they could just it start up when your phone turns on and then just keeps running in the back. And it's kind of weird because like sometimes I'll it'll. Yeah, sometimes I'll do it. Sometimes it won't. Yeah, I guess. Which you need a you need to report report it as an issue because. Right, well. I did it on mine, and Firefox is pretty good about. Um, oh yeah, they, they will like fix that. some issues if they get at least like twenty or yeah. fifty people or something like that reporting that issue. They'll look into it. Right. I mean, you know, one person's like, ah, I don't like this. All the layout sucks. You know, they might they might look at it, but not really. Yeah. So, um, same with the cutting the cable thing. I think this is something that Time Warner kind of did, kind of be like, hey, we have a, an iPad app now. Well, um. I don't, do we, are we allowed to have, or not allowed, but do we, I don't even think you can have Time Warner down here, they're not very big in the southeast, right? Um, I don't think they are. No, they're more like northeast and like, uh. Well, they got, they got some, uh, they, they have Time Warner in some of the rural areas. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of times it's under a different name. Like, oh, a subs like subs or subs or subs area name, whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, you, so Time Warner released a, uh, cable application. Um, Carlo, I've noticed that Ron's been using it a bit. Uh, I think Steve from the Tech Buzz, he's trying it out. Um, I, I know Steve used it, and yeah. um, think, it didn't work for him on the uh, the first day or something. I had server overload, yeah. and he couldn't access any of his um, channels. So that's what this um, Engadget article is talking about, is the app's been crashing, their servers haven't been updating correctly. I mean... I think this is, like we talked about, cable is essentially dying in front of our eyes. I think it's going to be a, uh, I think we're going to see the um, print industry maybe die long before yeah, cable cause will. Yeah, because, you know, 
Amazon's already about to push out their free Kindle. And, I mean, I know you're always going to have those people that are just like, no, I want paperback. I mean, yeah. you know, and you always have those people that say, no, I want to watch my rabbit ears. Yeah. You know, if, if they never switched over to digital uh, TV over in the United States, then, because we have no more analog TV at all, um, you would still have people, like, with the little, you know, antennas, like, oh, come on, let me see this channel in static. Yeah. Now it's like, you either get it or you get, like, artifacts. Yeah. And or nothing. If, if Tom Warren was going to do this, I think it might be kind of interesting if they had, like, an app for, like, Roku or something, and you didn't have to... I could see them maybe doing, like, a 20 or $30 a month, maybe, like, half the price of cable, and say, you can watch most of our channels or something. I would like to see a direct subscription to just their internet service, like, cable over internet service. I think that would be more interesting than, like, actually, but they, would, they wouldn't they would gain any money, you know? I don't think we'll, we'll ever see that, but this is essentially... Just if you have Time Warner Cable, you have to sign in with their web account or whatever. And you also have to understand that um, these are the cable companies that are doing this. Yeah. Um, a lot of the a lot of the uh, actual channels, stations like Discovery Channel and stuff, don't want this to happen. They're yeah. losing money for contracts with the different cable companies because now people that normally would not be able to watch their station or would have to pay to watch their station now can watch any of the shows instantly when they broadcast live. Or they can see it in a different form. So granted, they may get... You see what I mean? I mean yeah, well, like, but they're still paying for the service, so I guess that's... Like, um, um, in, in this article, it actually says that um, Dish Network... or not Dish Net, Discovery Channel does not like Dish Network Sling Powered app. So, like, because, if, if, yeah. you under, if you guys ever heard of that... Uh, well, Dish Network, of course, is a place over here um, that does satellite. And... Yeah, so um, we have them, and I think it would be pretty cool to have a sling player. We've talked about yes, that. Yes, we talked about it, and the, you, it's like three hundred and something dollars. You're basically getting like a little Linux box for your for your receiver. It's yeah. like a little Linux DVR, and it hooks up via um, they got like gigabit Ethernet or something on yeah. it now, and it also has wireless in, and you basically just it's like an HDMI pass through or something. Yeah, it goes through it, kind of like the Google it's like, TV. It's like Google TV, but it's like their own like little thing going on. Yeah, and. What the cool thing about it is that you have to get this thing, but if you get it, you can actually get like Google TV is synced up with it and you can control it via Wi-Fi and stuff. And and you can but, watch it on 3G now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but you, 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 they offer a free service with the the player, which is like Slingbox. It has it basically has a Slingbox built in. If you guys are familiar with the Slingbox, you plug your video inputs into it. Yeah, and a Slingbox. It broadcasts it over the internet via like IPTV or whatever, and then you just open up an app. And you can control it with a remote control. Yeah, they've got an Android app now. Yeah. They've got i. They've got iPad specific. They've got iPhone. They've got everything essentially. You can watch via your web browser. So if you're, let's just say that Jacob came over here and we didn't have cable or something, but he had cable at his house, he could access it through his account and we could watch it. And the cool thing about Slingbox is you can do this with like a anything. You could whatever you can input into it. It's free after you yeah. pay for the device, which is. I guess it's kind of expensive, but then again, I guess you're kind of paying for the service as well because, as far as I know, Slingbox is a free service that comes yeah, with the... Yeah, Slingbox is basically, you buy the, the device, you get all the other stuff. Sort of like how, uh, what was it, um, uh, uh, Flow TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like that, but it doesn't have its own, like, 3G back net, you know, back... back so you uh, still have to pay for a 3G phone. service, but what... Discovery wants you to have to buy like their app or something. Oh, yeah. Then and a lot of their shows aren't available um, online or online or instantly right after they air them. Like they've been doing really bad about Stargate. Like, uh, what am I saying? This is sci-fi. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, Discovery. A lot of their shows aren't just available. Um, and you if can't they watch do, them online. They're they're drastic. They're like really um, old shows, and then yeah. they'll like the new ones. They'll say like give you a five minute clip or something and they really push nowadays like iTunes and other things Amazon oh, yeah. you can buy them on there if, if you if you go pay some money for their show they'll let you watch it yeah. which I understand where they're going but it would be a lot better if if they if the consumer didn't think they were actually paying for it yeah. like the way Hulu does is I mean I know they got the Hulu Plus which is I think a stupid stupid, I, yeah. stupid thing 
unless you're just really diehard about watching every single show over and over again from an episode. If you've already watched it when it came through once, why would you want to pay and watch it again? Yeah. That's another story. But, um, you know, you go in there and uh, uh, lose, you know, all train of thought that you were going in whatever direction. Uh, yeah, but yeah but like, I don't know. But yeah, that's basically what it's all Essentially, about. Essentially, Discovery, every every um, device, every connection that you watch them on, they want you to pay for separately. So if I'm only paying for one Dish Network stream and I'm watching it on my computer, my lap, you know, I'm watching it on my desktop, my laptop, my 3G, my iPad, you know, my Evo or my Inspire 4G, they don't want that to happen. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't think I would be comfortable watching Slingbox on my you know, 2 gig or 4 gig pack- package since AT&T doesn't have unlimited. I mean, essentially, Sprint is the only unlimited carrier in the yeah. U.S. anymore. So, I mean, you, you got your bandwidth caps and, and you know, that, Carlo, so. I think you have a bandwidth cap on your DSL, right? Um, um, yeah, I believe uh, once I... Well, the way it's with me on my current plan, they say it's unlimited, but as soon as I reach about 80 gigs, I'll get an email saying that you're, uh, you're basically using a lot and you need to calm down. Yeah. And... Uh, I can keep going if I want, but if I go out over a hundred, they'll basically reduce me to dial-up speed, or yeah. they'll just uh, completely cut me off. Yeah, that's that's I pretty think. much how uh, Charter is over here, unless you like. I mean, threaten to like cancel your thing because they're all about the dollar more than, you know, yeah. whatever. So, they they I guess they figured, I like like you're saying, you know, cables dying, and. You know they want to they want to be able to get money however they can, so I think really any charger doesn't I don't think they they would even break even if they didn't have their cable connection. Yeah, if they didn't have internet, they they couldn't survive right now because they try to bring on the phone thing and that sort of works, but like you know. So is, is charter one other thing before we yeah, move on? But is charter do they? I know some people like cable companies they'll do IP telephone. I mean essentially it's IP, but it's you don't IP, really. Yes. Oh, okay. So it AT&T, doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't go back to any kind of AT and T or anything backbone. Okay. It goes so, so essentially. Which, you might as well. In reality, it all goes down to the same backbone. It's just they like to try to keep it separate. Th- everybody yeah. thinking that it's separate. Like it's all fiber optic. It all goes down to a central location somewhere that's fiber optic. You don't have. You don't have fifteen thousand yeah. different fiber optic things going yeah. everywhere. It. it typically comes down I mean you can run like the whole like United States of America's phone calls all at once on one strain of fiber optic I mean it, it's very high data throughput on fiber optic so you know yeah I mean they they have like IP TV basically so our IP phone voice over IP and it works sometimes, but like my sister can call me sometimes, you know. But she'll be like, rawr, rawr, rawr. "I'm like, what in the world's going on?" Oh, so we're browsing the web man. while we're talking on the phone. You're getting back to what you used to have a dial-up or whatever, you know. You yeah. can be on the phone and anyway. I mean, <laughs> you know. I'm downloading uh, Hulu. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a funny story because you know, I'm guessing Ubisoft is they're a pretty major game. Um, I think. Do you know any like popular games they've done, Carlo? I know that. They've done a couple. Um, but I know they've done Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that's, I know. That's what I was thinking of, too. Um, Mass Effect is not them. I think Mass Effect is... Uh, um, no, that's EA yeah, and yeah. Bioware. Yeah. Um, anyway, they're a pretty major game developer. You know, um, they've got Assassin's Creed. They've got a couple other ones, of course. This is about Rainbow Assassin's Six. Creed. Rainbow Six, yeah, Vegas, and there's a couple other ones. Um, but essentially, they've been kind of found guilty of pirating <laughs> the... Um, now, granted, this is still like questionable but um it's kind of it's kind of shady of how they acquired these um songs um because yeah. most of the time if you get um a video game or something those songs are in-house produced or specially produced or they have written consent to use them in the video game like they pay like an artist to use it or whatever and most of the time in a game like this it's going to be like sound effects and stuff so they're gonna you know what i mean i mean it's not going to be like actual songs i mean a couple of them will be but they're Usually in-house produced, they'll have somebody come in and record these, but, um, yeah, they've been found kind of guilty of, <laughs> I mean, I guess the first stage of kind of being prosecuted for, um, pirating. Yeah, you're basically using, uh, uh, the, this guy's soundtracks without 
his okay, acknowledgement. Like, yeah, he's oh, this sounds like great. This would be great in uh in our uh, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed stuff. Uh, let's just let's just take it. I, we're not going to pay him. Yeah, he won't care. I mean, his his songs will be in Assassin's Creed. But as soon as you go pirate a game from Ubisoft or something, they're going to be all over you. Oh and, yeah, they're going to try know. to steal your money so that they can pay their lawsuit they're about to go through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just downloaded. Oh, we're getting you. Yeah. Like you know, little, whatever. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of funny, and it's uh, uh, Arsa thirteen is is how it was in, who encoded it. So it, it's kind of funny that they they just completely renamed it and. You gotta think about that too, because most, um, especially when you encode a file now, it's got like a bunch of information oh, yeah, the ID3 tied to stuff. it. Yeah. I mean, you can you can you can embed a bunch of data in there, yeah. and I, I'm just I think it's funny that they didn't even try to strip that Probably data up. up. Yeah. And they probably didn't even know. Right. Some. I bet you, like the director of whoever was oh, yeah, putting this like, together. Oh, dude, look at this CD I got. Let's use yeah. this in our uh, our game. This would be awesome. So in some in some ways, you can't fault the whole company. But yeah. then again, there's probably one guy. You probably need to background check this stuff because you know. Or at least make a program that strips all the ID three stuff off your yeah. music. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. So. I just thought it was kind of funny. I mean, it's not well, really. Yeah. Whatever. Like, and not it would be even funnier if they, like. They would have not not just stripped it, but like renamed it so that it was like encoded by Ubisoft. I mean, I yeah. mean that would be hilarious. Like if they just completely took all rights from the guy, they're like, yeah, it's us. Yeah. They released the soundtrack. CD. I mean, they probably would have, but they just <laughs> and they didn't got realize it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood uh, uh, soundtrack CD available at all WalMarts and uh, yeah. <laughs> other supermarket locations. Um, so our final story on the news talk, and this was actually yesterday that this came out. It's kind of <laughs> interesting, but a lot of people are congratulating um, Kevin Rose because he's going to be essentially leaving Dig. Um, he's going to be, I, I think he still said that he's going to be over the board of directors, but essentially he's getting his hands out of Dig. He left Dig when they switched over to their new Dig. Yeah, he's never, you know, I think I can see him as more of the pioneering factor in Dig. He was one of the original he, founders. He, he likes, he, I mean, he originally came up with the idea of Dig. Yeah. He, I remember he was on the screensavers, and he goes, yeah, I got this new website that I'm starting up. It's called Dig. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, it like, blew up like crazy. So, uh. But now, I mean, he's got some other startup plans, and we've seen that in a couple ways. He, he has that new video series, I think it's called, like, The Foundry or something. I think that's pretty cool. Um. But he's saying he's got a lot of new startup ideas, and he's now, he's more into the venture funding deal because, you know, he's made his cash in startups. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, he's got Rev3, too, which is essentially yeah. one of the biggest online he, he's, videos. He's part of that. He's part of, you know, Dig. He's got, he's got a lot of stuff, too. I mean, uh, he's got um, he, he's like Engie in, Moco. He's, he's in Apple with a lot of people. Yeah. He's got Engie Moco, which yeah. is a, a game developer on the iPhone that, uh, I think it's Farm, not Farm, what's it called, uh... Crap, I can't remember the name now. Um, what's that thing called? Anyway, I've got it on my iPad. I can't remember. Um, something like Farmville for the iPad. Um, he's got a couple other ones. He was in uh, Six Apart before they got acquired by... I can't remember who they got acquired by, but it was pretty major acquisition. Anyway, you know, I, I'm sure that we're not going to um, see him go away in the online space, but it's kind of... You know, I guess it's kind of... I mean, it's good to see him going in a different direction because essentially... They haven't done anything with Dig in, what, like, eight to ten months at least. Um, and, you know, pretty cool. And I also saw that, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess he's still going to stay in Dig, but honestly, I think Dig is essentially dead. I think a lot of people moved to Reddit. And also, I mean, you can get a lot of stuff just from Twitter nowadays. Dude, if he was able, a, a, ever able to sell Dig... Now, I mean, two hundred. Uh, Google essentially put two hundred uh, million dollars on the table about four years ago, yeah. saying, and they're, they're only saying right now it's only worth forty million. Yeah, that's how much venture funding they've gotten. So, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, essentially, and Google backed out at the last minute because they. Um, they're like, oh wait, wait, hold on, hold on, never mind. I saw this. They interviewed every single Dig employee, which is on, back then was only like you know ten or twelve, maybe thirteen people, and they. Interviewed them one by one, and essentially they weren't. They they thought that they wouldn't fit in Google very well. But you know, I mean, I could definitely see Google putting something like that, like some rank up system or something, in their even just their feed reader or something. I mean, that would be pretty. Cool, yeah. But. Hey, you know, it'd be really awesome if Google made it where you could, uh, you could. I won't. I don't want to use dig up because that's you yeah, know, their, their term. Yeah. But like you know, 
thumbs up like links so of, of, cool. of like actual like search results. Yeah. Because like, you know I get a lot of search results I don't even care about. Now you'd probably have you'd probably have people that would probably uh, and stuff. they yeah. they would probably ex- exploit that and have bots that go on there and thumb up their website to the top of the search results so that I you mean, it's still an interesting idea. But yeah, I mean it's kind of cool. Pretty cool. All right, well I guess this, this pretty much does it for this um, these um, bookmarks. I I don't know. All right, the news section of the story. Now we're going to move on to our bookmarks. Jeb, I think yours is. Um, bookmark first there, so if we want to, uh, you can go ahead and tell us a little bit about this. All right, um, the website uh, bookmark that I had today, and I, I've seen this before. I just never really went over to it because I'm always like doing something else and I never have time. Yeah. But um, the website is BatchPCB.com, and um, basically it's it's done through uh, uh, SparkFun. Um, which we've come to figure out that a lot of people, or at least some people, it's SparkFun, right? That they're kind of it's like an out affiliate of, off of SparkFun. They there's like here's SparkFun, and they're like, hey, let's do this. And we've found that there's a couple people online yeah. that do the same thing. Yes, that are actually affiliated with SparkFun. So um, or have kind of connections. They got something. partnerships or something going on. This is pretty sweet. If you've ever tried to make a printed circuit board, which is what the PCB of Batch stands for. Um. You have a lot of setup fees, and you normally end up spending about like 50 bucks just to get a circuit board made. And you normally have to buy like 12 or 13 or 14 or 50 of them. And it's like, it gets expensive pretty quickly, especially if you just want one. Like, I don't want to make 50. Yeah. I just want one. And I want to see if it works. Oh, it didn't work. Crap. Now I've got to make another one. Now you got to buy another 50. Batch PCB. There is no... Um, there's no there's no minimums. That's that's pretty much as simple as I can and make it. Um, they've partnered with a um, uh, company over in China that they said we will give you all of our business if you will not let us have minimums. So they don't. So they they that's just cool. said here you go. Here's no minimums. For example, here's a Mac six six seven five. I have a three D printer, so this is kind of interested in me. Or in, interesting me, it's a, a K-type thermocouple to digital converter. Okay, um, you basically put your thermocouple in one part, it brings it up to a digital signal, and you can plug it into your like MakerBot or Arduino or whatever, and actually get an actual like temperature reading out of it, and not have to go in there and convert it with other things. So it's really good for stuff like if you didn't have, um, if you didn't have it already integrated into your your you know controller. You could add this as an add-on, and you don't even have to add. You know, it's it's pretty sweet. So basically, what this guy did, this David Dow, that Dow, he he's on Thingiverse. That's how I found out really about this, um, which we've talked about Thingiverse on Thingiverse on here before. I mean, he even has his link down there at the bottom. Um, but basically, what you do is you can you can upload. Um, there's a software called uh, Eagle. Uh, was it Eagle? Whatever. Uh, yeah, Eagle, uh, Eagle PCB or Eagle Soft or something like that, Eagle Board, um, and basically it's a free PCB ma- like designing software. You can download all these, a lot of the like Spark, Spark Fun, and different companies out there that sell their stuff have um, like little footprints, which is like you know the how a you know IC is set up and stuff, and they have these all set up, and you can bring them into the program. Basically, what you do is you make that, upload it to the website, and they'll tell you this is how much it's going to cost. So, on this example board, which is a pretty sweet board, you can get it made for three bucks, basically. That's pretty cool. I mean, you give them three bucks, here's a board. And essentially, that would have been a lot more on the Oh, yeah, you would, have, you would have spent 50 bucks, and you would have had to get about 20 of them. So, essentially, and it's not, yeah, okay. So, you're having to order in bulk, even if you only wanted to test out one. Yeah, on this website, it's you want one, just just buy one. You just come down here, add to cart, cool. and you know you got to log in, of course. But that's it. I mean, you specify the thickness of your board, all that stuff, the width, and everything, and that's it. And then you actually have it up on here. They, it's open circuits, um, so or I think you can opt to make them open or not open. But I think it's all open. If you use them, it's open source. So you basically let them um, 
you, you know, design, right? yeah, you, you just post the design up and that's it. Okay. That's so, so cool. anybody and their brother could order it. I don't think you really make money off of it. It's just sort of like a, this is the cost of the board. Yeah. So it's they're still, not really out yeah. to make money. They're not really out to do a bunch of other stuff. It's just sort of like, do it. Yeah. And then they also tell you, uh, um, uh, they have they have this cool little like status thing going on, and they'll actually tell you what percentages of different things are being made right now and stuff. That's kind of cool. So. Be cool. And I'm guessing you can still order in batch as well. So if you decide oh, yeah, that it's batch PCB, okay. so you can order like fifty One, of them if you yeah. want it, and you might get a discount or you might not. I don't know. That's pretty so. cool because especially some of the projects we talk about. A lot of people are only going to be making one. If they want to make some more, they would want to test it before and stuff like that. And you know, you don't want to have 50 of these um, circuit boards that are only useful for one thing or you know, designed for one thing or whatever, um, laying around when you've got other things to do or whatever. So, pretty cool. Yep. All right. Well, um, you know, when I when I go through uh, bookmarking all the stories for this, I've I've decided I've started using. Um, Google Reader, which is a, an application, or not really an application, it's a web service that Google, um, you can, you know, I, I've got like 10 RSS feeds from like the top tech websites, and you get a lot of duplicates because, you know, somebody will report it first, and then TechCrunch will pick it up, and then Engadget picks it up, or whatever. Um, but the cool thing is they have a starring feature, so essentially all I do is go through there, and if I think this is an interesting story, I just star it in my Google Reader account, and then when I go on like... I usually wait till Thursday or Friday to make the show notes because, you know, we could have developments or something that, especially like our, a launch day or something that may want to be covered. Like, we wouldn't have gotten the, the Kevin Rose story if I would have made the show notes on, like, Tuesday or something. Yeah. Um, so you, you sort of have to almost wait up to the last minute so right. you could actually get stories. Which, and it's not really that hard because I, yeah. the hardest part is finding the story. you can make them as you story. go. Right. So, hey, there's something happened Monday. Let me add that to the story. And that's the cool thing about... Um, Google Reader is it's yeah. one click and I've got that archive and you know even though I have like a thousand feed notifications coming in per day I still have those nine that yeah, are filtered out. Yeah, there. it's kind of like a Gmail deal. It looks like Gmail a lot, um, but I've I've come to uh, find a lot of our stories on slash dot dot org, and they do a lot of things. It's really one of those things where it's not only um, it's really a geek culture website along with news, so you get a lot of cool things about like. Um, I know there's a lot of Linux news on here and stuff. Um, this has become one of my number one news sources for Tech Weekly and also, you know, Gadget Gurus when we do gadgets and things. Um, they're really more of a, they're not a publishing company. So it's not like TechCrunch where I'm getting it directly from the source. Cool thing about Slashdot is they've got some interesting people. So it's kind of like a dig, somebody would dig something up, but it's just a website that does it for you. So I know that these people, like, they're keyed in on geek culture and some cool tech news and stuff, and they usually, it's kind of like they sort some of it for me, essentially. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and, th and there's always, uh, when I was over at Dig, you know, always over there, there's controversy between uh, Dig, Slashdot, Red Edit, Reddit, um, yeah. Reddit and uh, Delicious. What's and, that other one called? Um, Stumble Upon. Yeah, Stumble Upon. Uh, all those, and they, they would go at each other because, oh, you're still in my story. No, yeah. I posted it first. No, you changed timestamp. No, yeah. I posted it second. And essentially since know. Dig is gone, or not really gone, but essentially nobody <laughs> since uses it. Since basically Dig doesn't exist anymore because I mean, Kevin Rose has yeah. left. Um, I just find Slashdot pretty cool, and I know um, a lot of people use it. It's pretty cool, and I, I think it's just one of those filters. And it's kind of like Tech Meme, if you are if you know about Tech Meme or something like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. I think this uh, on-site thing has worked out pretty well. I think it's going to be a lot better when we get our new um, thing. And Carlo... We'd love to have you back on because we're going to be set up, essentially since Jacob brought over his uh, net top, we can, oh, yeah. and plus we'll have already two Skype computers so we could essentially have four people. Yeah, that would be crazy. I really don't want to do four people. Essentially, <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah. no, four people is a bit mad. I've yeah. seen Steve and the Tech Bus do that. It's yeah. a bit hard to keep up with four people. I mean, it would be good for something. I can see that like if we wanted to have me, Jacob, and a Carlo on. But then we we wanted to have somebody come on just for like an interview or something for like ten minutes. That might be okay. Hey, but, and I gotta say, I mean, I if we can find them cheap, it'd be awesome to get some like four by three, uh, like like some smaller four by three LCD screens and get like right. a couple of them for each uh, Skype call and full screen it to the that monitor. Well, I mean, we because, could we could do that now. That's what I'm planning to do. Yeah, and then you like, actually have it in your shot. 
Oh, so like it's a one less shot it. that you actually have to go to for a two. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. I know like Steve, how Leo does, sort of. Yeah. Um, Carl, I know Steve has done this, and his looks amazing because he um didn't he like color correct his camera where you can actually see the LCD monitor or you know whatever the monitor behind him, or I know in the old setup that he had that was pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah, he had, a, had an old set of red, a couple of monitors behind him where you could see who yeah. was calling him and then he yeah. full screened him or whatever, like a Skyposaurus. It's pretty cool. I like the, I like the, simple, uh, the simple little uh, screens behind you type deal. You yeah, know? I mean, in, essentially since we would have a two-way shot, it would be cool to have that shot and still include everybody or whatever. And we oh, could yeah. have like logos or something behind it. That would be pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I'm thinking about, you know, since we stream 24-7 now, um, I'm thinking about if we do set up some of the studio today, we might bring a little spy cam down there or something, little maybe. Something, something. Little, little live uh, after the show. Uh... Yeah, so that might be in a couple hours, so if you guys are hanging out in the chat room, you might want to stick around. We might bring a laptop down there or something and kind of show the, the reconstruction or the, re the building of the studio. But Carlo, we thank you for joining us here on Tech Weekly. It's been a pleasure. Um, like to have you back on, you know, essentially yeah, cool. we'll, we'll be able to have you, really the main thing was getting a uh, computer free to have you on, I mean, that, yeah. that was really the only thing, but now we've got like a mass amount of oh, yeah. space all of a sudden, so that's pretty cool. Now, now Nick needs to, uh, <laughs> Logan wants me to knock you off your bed. <laughs> Uh, I think we'll save that for the <laughs> show. I got um, a, uh, a pin over here, I could just stab it and he'd fall on the ground. But we, um... <laughs> Carlo, you can find Carlo over at twitter.com slash Carlo Brown. I would encourage you guys to follow him. Um, one of our regulars in the chat room, along with Smoothie and Logan and Lady Ooh, Bren, yeah. I think. I can't really see. We got, like we, got we, got a new, uh, we got a new guy on here, uh, Gordon. Uh, he lives up in, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, he's in Scotland, Scotland, which is yeah. part of the UK. That's cool. I, I kept I saying Scottish, and I was like, it's not Scottish, Scotland. Yeah. Pretty cool. So um. But guys, we would we'd love to um, have some other people on. You know, Logan's been on here before. I know Smoothie, I think we're going to have Smoothie on a couple episodes of PB at night when we talk about sports, because Smoothie's a pretty big sports fan like I am. But, um, Carlo, great to have you on. Also, find Jacob on Twitter, twitter.com slash freaking huge, F-R-E-A-K-I-N-H-U-G-E. Uh, and on YouTube. What, what was up with the naming? Did you just not name the episode yesterday, or...? Did you notice how it uploaded to YouTube? I think it like lost your name or something. What? Yeah. I gotta fix that. Uh, so it had like a generic um, yeah, like title, like numbers. I thought it? I hit there save. Go. See? What? Yep. Ugh. I don't know. Ugh. I mean, I, it worked. It, in just to let you know, Carlo, did you notice the the gray bar a couple of days ago that was at the top, for, like the first couple of minutes of the the video? I don't know if you noticed that or not, but. Um, uh, no, I didn't notice the grey bar, but I did notice a few flash bugs. But yeah, yeah, uh, um, I dated my flash and then I saw it in. With uh, with uh, the Microsoft uh, Windows Movie Maker thing, right? Um, you know, I've been using it to upload. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's limited, but yeah. it's cool for just drag because you just dump all your files in there yeah. and it reorders but them. But what whatever. sucks about it is that if it fails when it goes yeah. to post it or process the video, it completely loses everything and you gotta type it all in again. So I stopped doing that and now what I've been doing is um, actually uh, uh, naming it or something. Yeah, something like, like I basically like save it to my computer as a WMV. It was just the same thing it was doing, it was just doing it to a temporary folder. Right. And then I take that and upload it via YouTube. Oh, so and then not, I can go and type it. in everything. Okay and save it and I don't it have to. it's limited with that. They use the API or something. Yeah, and so. what, I, what I normally do is I open up Notepad and I just like yeah, that's type what in the I do. title. I use G-Edit and I, I do that with the, all of our posts So because yeah. we post on multiple websites and things including ours. So you just copy paste, yep. copy paste. And I'll just write it out once while the video is like rendering or something and then when it's done I just copy and paste on YouTube and our website and things. So, pretty cool. You can find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Jones. Like I said, we're going to be tearing down the... Well, actually not really... It's not. It's not going to be like uh, Steve's. We're actually going to be like building a whole new studio because, essentially, um, we've got a pretty Jerry rigged right now. Wouldn't you say, Jacob? Because, um, you know, I mean, oh yeah, we're, we've got like cables run all over the room, and essentially, it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to have a single shot, but if you watch the live cam, I don't know how far we're going to get today because we got a couple things we're going to have to do. But anyway, it's going to be fun. Um, we might be. Uh, hopefully, if I can get the wide angle going on this thing, I can. We can get this being integrated into the uh, shot there. 
Yeah, and plus, you know, we may, if we get it done, I'm hoping, it's going to be a lot of work, but, you know, depending on how long Jacob wants to stay over here, uh, we may be doing Gadgeters here on Monday. I don't know. And uh, we've got some cool new info that's going to be coming up pretty soon, so Jacob and I have got some things in the works that we're going to be revealing on a uh, later date. Um, and then also, you can follow PBCast TV on Twitter, twitter.com slash PBCast TV. Also, youtube.com slash PBCast TV. Um, so, yeah. You renaming your video? Yeah, again? I'm OCD like that. No, I understand. Um, Mikado, once again, thanks for joining us. And uh, I guess until next time, I'm Nick Jones. And I'm Jacob Roberts. Carlo, you want to do an outro for us? I'm Carlo Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Tech Weekly. See you guys. Oh, that was good.